Counter-Strike 2 is officially here, and with the official release, the question must be asked. What kind of content should we expect coming after the release, other than the brand new and already exciting gameplay, map remakes, and everything else we've already seen? And while this is all very exciting, one operation-sized question has been on at least three people's minds in the lead-up to the release of CS2, especially since the last operation that CSGO got was rather lackluster. Many have speculated about what fun new game modes, challenges, and items could or should be added to the game. This video will be full of my personal opinions, so take them with a grain of salt, and still comment if they piss you off please because it boosts my engagement. Speaking of engagement, while I have you, please consider subscribing to the channel, we're getting close to 4,000, which is nuts. And if you really want to support me, consider becoming a channel member to get access to some members-only perks. Thanks, and enjoy the video. Let's look back into CSGO's history of great, and not-so-great updates. First, to see if we can get any inspiration, plus it's also fun to be nostalgic. Starting from the ending, the last major update CSGO got was Operation Riptide. Released almost two years ago at the time of writing this, on September 21st, 2021. It was a decent little romp that took some of the innovations from the Great Broken Fang operation, like an operation store instead of a battle pass, and leaving some things for no reason, like unique and world building co op missions, instead opting to literally copy and paste some missions from week to week. And look, I'm not gonna complain because this. Same update also brought us the fantastic and much missed Insertion 2, Riot Shields and Casual Hostage Modes, and buff the Duelies. But it also was the update that morphed the M4A1S into the stupid, easily abusable, boring ass weapon that it is today. So the general pros for that were the collections, which were decent, and the missions were pretty fun, but not that original. The cons, no co-op missions, and a general lack of fit and finish. Moving back another year, there was Broken Fang. I have a lot of memories playing this one, so I might be slightly biased, but it was tons of fun. Some really quality co-op missions, some fantastic collection skins, and... The first operation to have an operation store instead of a much more random and vague way to obtain the collection items, and it also brought a community favorite, retakes, into the official Valve server club, as well as everyone's favorite, or most hated depending on who you ask, diffuse map, Ancient. Overall, pros, again some great collections, great missions, and exciting new game modes and maps, and a lot of content in general to play with. So yeah, in the last two operations, it's clear that my favorite and probably many people's favorite parts of operations are the missions and any additional new content such as maps and especially game modes. Oh, oh you, you, you don't care about any of that? Oh, I, I see. Okay, I guess it's time to talk skins, something that I don't really know much about, so this part of the video might be rough, but bear with me. First of all, the operation case. With CS2 introducing inspect animations and user-modifiable UV sheets for previously uninteresting or single-use items such as the bomb, the Zeus, and the grenades. Now, seeing as we've already seen a Zeus skin added, this confirms that Valve are willing to add skins to previously unskinnable items. And while the Zeus was the most likely by far to get skins for it, who knows? Maybe we'll see a grenade case. Besides that, I'm sure the new collections would have some Zeus skins in them, preferably some that are a bit less rare so that more people can have skins for their taser, which would be cool to see alongside some flashier Source 2 enabled finishes that Valve have surely been working on. The rest of the case can have whatever other skins in it, but the gold should probably be some new knives. It's been years at this point since we've gotten any new ones, so I don't think it's a huge long shot to expect this to happen. Collections are something that I think could use an interesting new twist, as instead of constantly newer and flashier designs, I think we could see a really interesting and refreshing take on the oldest collections in the game, like the Alpha Collection, the Militia Collection, or of course the Assault Collection. These skins and finishes are absolutely iconic, and are still held in a very high regard in the community, so I think it would be really cool to see modern interpretations of these skins on the first operation of CS2. Maps. Maps are the heart of Counter-Strike. The canvases for each strategically beautiful round of this timeless game have been played on these incredible community-made layouts for two decades. I think there are a ton of different ways to go about selecting which maps make it, and because CS2 and Source 2 content are still very new and rare, the selection process for the maps will be a little more difficult. But let's try anyway. First of all, FM Pone, the creator of several iconic maps for Counter-Strike, has definitely been cooking away in secret before CS2 was even announced. And there are some incredible Source 2 projects here. While looking through his Twitter timeline, you could easily pick up and choose pretty much any of the maps he's shown. I personally think though that the work in progress version of DE Santorini has pretty much everything I want out of an operation map. The layout has already been tested from years of playing, the visuals are incredible, and it gives players a fresh new way to play comp besides auto-selecting Mirage. 
I would also love to see a return of DE insertion 2, DE insertion 2, DE, 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 DE insertion 2, but that's very unlikely to happen as it was only added one operation ago. But still, I mean it's insertion 2, who would complain? Wingman maps haven't really caught my eye in a while to be honest, and that's not to be insulting to the map creators, I just kind of see most of them as either trying too many new ideas at once or returning to a boring standard layout that makes people happy. I think that pool day would make for a great basic fun focused wingman map that doesn't take itself too seriously, and as far as a more competitive layout goes, I think that DE Breach by Yanzel and Putty adapted for wingman would be really cool. This map always seemed to play pretty well to me, and depending on which bomb site they would choose to make into a wingman version, it could be really fun with how much verticality is in this layout. Game modes go hand in hand with maps, and personally I think that we should take some heavy inspiration from past operations, specifically Operation Hydra. Operation Hydra was the last of the older style operations that came out, and so it was also the most refined. The way that Operation Hydra handled custom game modes was great, too. There were rotations of custom game modes happening periodically, which keeps things fresh and forces players to try new things, especially if they want to complete every challenge in the operation. I think that bringing back not only the rotation style, but the same game modes, with a few new ones of course, could be really fun. The game modes that they added were a nice, differently paced slice of CS content that took itself way less seriously, something that I think deserves a place in this game. I think that seeing those older Hydra game modes returning but with more of an incentive to play them, like a drop pool specific to those modes or extra XP for playing them, just a little something to try and get more players into the lobbies would be really cool. Now with all this being said, I think that it's still unlikely that we'll see an update of this type in the near future. Valve already added one large content update to the game in the form of bringing back Arms Race. and. Even if you don't personally find that update to be enough to satiate your desire for more content in this game, it isn't really Valve's priority at the moment to add new things, or even add things that they didn't port from CSGO yet. Rather, most likely we will see Valve rolling out some more features to the base game, such as more functional anti-cheat, more console commands, and other quality of life and core features to the game. And even though I would have preferred that Valve just delay the release and have these ready for when the game shift, I have to agree with their priorities here if they are what they seem to be. You can't keep building on a foundation if it's not all the way done. So anyways, that's all I could really condense into this video, but be sure to let me know in the comments if I missed something or if you just have a great video idea. Thanks for watching, consider subscribing if you're still here, have a good night, and as always, bye.